You see that. <laughs> it's. Hey, shalom, Israel, most high in Christ, bless. Uh, we're going to stand up and face Jerusalem. Send up the prayers. <laughs> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Shalom, Israel. Most high in Christ, bless. Most high in Christ, bless. Good morning to y'all. Hope y'all had a lovely Sabbath and weekend. My red was right. I am getting a lot more gray. Uh, today topic, we're going to touch on what grace is. Now, as y'all know, we get a lot of phone calls and stuff like that. And I hope that that brother watching right now, uh, I watched a pastor called Michael Todd. Because there's a, a guy that, that calls and he always has a question about grace, what grace is and what it ain't and all that stuff. And really, none of these Christian pastors, Christianity as a whole, will never tell you what the words of the Bible actually mean. They'll give their own little spiel, their own little... Uh, version of what they think the words of the Bible is. Not knowing that the Bible itself is its own dictionary. That's what we got to understand. Give me Romans 15. Well, matter of fact, do I got a brother to scribe for me? Can I get a brother to scribe? All praise Josiah. All right. So give me Romans chapter 15, verse 4. The book of Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So the things written aforetime was written for us to learn from. Now, in Christianity, they would say that grace is the unmerited, uh, the unmerited act of kindness given to us by Jesus Christ, or the unmerited, undeserving. You know, they always try to use these big words to make it seem like it's some big favor that you know, we have been granted. So 
let's go to see what grace is according to the Bible. Give me Titus chapter 2, verse 11. The book of Titus chapter 2, verse 11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. So let's read that again, because the Bible just gave the definition of grace. We're going to see what it is again. Read it again. For the grace of God that brings salvation. Has the grace of God that brings salvation. So grace brings salvation. Read. Hath appeared to all men. The all men is Israel. Read. Teaching us that denying ungodliness. So the grace that brings salvation teaches us to deny ungodliness. Read. And worldly lust. And worldly lust. Read. We should live soberly. So when grace teaches us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust, it teaches us to live soberly. Read. Righteously, righteously, and godly, and godly in this present world, in this present world today. So if we're living righteously in this present world, go to Deuteronomy 625. Let's see what it means to live righteously in this present world because according to the Bible grace teaches us to live soberly righteously and godly in this present world because they got a lot of people that will say oh that, well, that was them back then the Bible says this present world today we have to live righteously today read Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 25 and it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments for the Lord our God so it shall be our righteousness if we do the commandments of God that's what righteousness is so go back to Titus chapter 2 the book of Titus chapter 2 verse 11 for the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men all men go to Acts chapter 2 verse 21 the grace of God that brings salvation hath appeared to all men. Let's see who the all men is. Let's let the Bible say who all men is. Read. The book of Acts chapter 2 verse 21. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Uh-huh. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. So the whosoever is the all men. How does one become a man? Go to 1 Kings chapter 2 verse 2. Because the Bible doesn't call everybody a man. Some people he calls dogs. Some people he calls, uh, what, 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 what? liars, whoremongers, heathens. Read that. First Kings chapter two verse two. I go the way of all the earth. Be thou strong, therefore, and show thyself a man. So, David told Solomon, "Show yourself a man." How? Read. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God uh -huh. to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and his testimonies, as it is written in the law of Moses, that thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest and whatsoever thou turnest thyself. So in order to be a man, you have to be keeping the commandments. Hmm. Who were the commandments given to? Go to uh, Psalms chapter 149. I mean, 147. This is what Christianity would not do. They would not go to the Bible to explain what the Bible is saying. All men is not all men. Because all men don't need salvation. What do white people need salvation from? Because that's, that's what they said, the grace of God. The grace of God brings salvation. What do white people need salvation? What do Asian people need salvation from? Asian people don't even believe in the same God as everybody else. Africans believe in many different gods. Read that. 
the book of Psalms, chapter 147, verse 19. He showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He had not dealt so with any nation. As for his judgments, they have not known them. God did not deal so with any other nation. So in order to be a man, you have to be keeping the commandments. Go back to Titus 2. Book of Titus, chapter 2, verse 11. And the commandments were only given to Israel. The Israelites. Read. For the grace of God that brings salvation hath appeared to all men. So the grace of God that brings salvation. Let's see what salvation is. Go to Luke chapter 1. The grace of God that brings salvation. Read. The book of Luke chapter 1 and verse 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. No, blessed be the Lord God of everybody. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Read. For he hath visited and redeemed his people. Uh-huh. And hath raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. So, blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath raised unto us a horn of salvation in the house of his servant David. David is not the forefather of all men. David is the forefather of the Israelites, specifically the tribe of Judah. Read. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, uh -huh. that we should be saved from our enemies. That we should be saved from who? Be saved from our enemies uh -huh. and from the hand of all that hate us. So the grace of God that bringeth salvation and that salvation is being saved from your enemies and from the hand of all that hate you. If you're being hated. Not because you're God's chosen people or because you're keeping the commandments or because you're doing what the Lord told you to do. If you're being hated because you're being evil to the rest of the world and now the world hates you, you, you there's no salvation for you. It's only destruction. The Bible said that we're going to be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. We're the ones getting shot down in the street. We're the ones that got the lowest education. We're the ones that get redlined in the housing system. We're the ones that get blackballed in the media whenever we talk truth. That doesn't happen to everybody else. I watched that day, Eden Mike uh, comic, Bill Burr, Bill Burr be going off on Esau. Funny as hell, that dude be going off on Esau. I don't see him having to apologize for being anti-Semitic anti-LGBT. I don't ever see that. But as soon as a black man say something, try to lift up the, 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 the decayed state of his people, then he's hateful, he's racist. All of that stuff. Because Christianity does not teach you what the Bible is. What they do is they take their own mind and say, well, I know that I'm doing wrong, all right? I do smoke cigarettes, and I do get drunk, and I fornicate. But at least I don't kill nobody. At least I don't rob nobody's banks. I go to work every day. I take care of my, my, my family. I pay my bills. So because I take care of my bills and because I work every day, they think that... The sin that they're doing is not as bad as the sin that you're doing. Go to uh, 2 Corinthians 10 and 12. 2 Corinthians 10 and 12. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 12. Read. For we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that, that command thee themselves. Mm -hmm. But they they measuring themselves by themselves. They measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves. That's what Christianity does. They compare themselves among themselves. They don't compare themselves to this Bible. They say, well. Well, I don't steal and I don't murder. Which is bad. And I don't rape women. And that's because all of that is bad. But, you know, I, I do I do I do smoke my weed and I do you know smoke my cigarettes and, you know, 
I, I, I may I may go to the club and, 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 you know, have a one night stand or two. But that's not as bad as what they doing over there. Read are not wise. They are not wise. They're comparing themselves to themselves among themselves. Like, well, I'm, I'm not doing as bad as that person is doing. Well, I'm not doing ba as bad as they doing. But go to James chapter two. So the grace of God that appeared to all men, which is Israel, that bringeth salvation, salvation is for Israel, teaches us to be sober and to keep the commandments. And the commandments were given to Israel. If you don't believe that, why does Christianity teach you that the laws are done away with? Oh, the, the laws don't apply to us. You're right, it don't apply to y'all. We're the ones that broke the commandments. We're the one. That's why we're here. Read that. James chapter 2, verse 11. But he that said, do not commit adultery, said also, do not kill. So, the same person that said, don't commit adultery, is the same person that said, don't kill. So, because you may not be murdering somebody, but you may be somebody side chick or you may have a side chick or a side dude. The same person that said don't kill is that same person that said don't commit adultery. Read. Now if thou commit a, no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. So if you never commit adultery, but if you kill somebody, you're still a transgression. You know what that means? Sin is still sin. Period. Sin is still sin. Now, are we saying that we're perfect? No. But how do you be perfect? Go to Psalms 19 and 7. Psalms 19 and 7. Because Christianity will do that too. Well, ain't nobody perfect. Hmm. Well, who told you about perfection? Who told who told us about perfection? Or did they come up with a version of perfection in their own head and say, well, I can't reach. I can't attain to that. They think perfect means never making a mistake. Hmm. Read that. But the Psalms chapter 19 verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. So if you're keeping the laws, you're striving for that perfection that Christ said to have, that Moses told us to have. Now watch this. Go to 2 Timothy 3, verse 16. 2 Timothy 3, verse 16. Because are we perfect? No. But are we striving for that? Yes. And I'm going to touch on it later because Christianity always say, well, we all fall short of the glory of God. Should you stay short? Should you stay short, though? If you fall short, OK. Should you stay short? That's the question that they refuse to ask. Read. Second Timothy chapter three, verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. All scripture, not just the New Testament, not just the Old Testament, the entire Bible, all scripture is given as inspiration of God. Read. And it's profitable for doctrine. It's profitable. All scripture is profitable. Read. For doctrine. For doctrine. For reproof. For reproof, meaning to correct you. Read. For correction. For correction, which is to correct you. For instruction of in righteousness. For instruction in the law, which is going to correct you. That the man of God may be perfect. That the man of God may be what? May be perfect. The Bible says that the scriptures is there to correct you with the law, that you may be perfect. Read. Thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Thoroughly furnished unto all good works. 
So how do you be perfect? By keeping the commandments, striving for perfection, correcting yourself that you may be perfect, thoroughly furnished to all good works. Like for instance, a lot of people have no idea what grace is actually doing. Like the scripture said in Titus chapter 2. Go back to it again, Titus 2 and 11. The book of Titus chapter 2 verse 11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. So the grace of God that brings salvation, the salvation is for Israel. Read. Teaching us that denying ungodliness. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust and worldly lust if you are denying ungodliness and worldly lust guess what you're doing you're correcting yourself you're no longer having one night stands why because you're no longer going to the club you're no longer smoking weed you're no longer um getting overly drunk you are now marrying the person that you had sex with you are now proving people as a single person to see whether or not that you can have a husband or a wife. You are now getting your life together because you see the commandments of the Lord say, hmm, if a man don't work, he don't eat. Well, I need to get a job. The Bible says that the man got to take care of his household. Hmm, I need to get a job and I need to get a house in order to take care of it. I need to start keeping these commandments. I need to do this, I need to do that. You're starting to correct yourself. So that grace of God that brings salvation, that appeared to you, teaches you to deny ungodliness and worldly dust, read. We should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Because back in the day, we wasn't living righteously. Even under Moses, we wasn't living righteously. i give you a prime example. Go to Numbers 15. Go to Numbers 15. Now, by the time the book of Numbers came up, the stories that are in the book of Numbers, we were already given the Sabbath in Genesis. We were given the Sabbath in Exodus two or three times. We were given the Sabbath in Leviticus. And then we get to Numbers. So all of them times, the Sabbath has been explained, re-explained, and re-explained again to us as the nation of Israel. But let's see what happened to a particular person in the book of Numbers chapter 15. Go to verse 32. The book of Numbers chapter 15, verse 32. And while the children of Israel were in the wilderness, they found a man that gathered sticks upon the Sabbath day. So there was a man that gathered sticks upon the Sabbath day. Now, the basic mind of Christianity would be like, well, well, what if the sticks was in front of his door and he was just clearing a pathway? Well, who says that what he was doing with the sticks? Hmm. Let's see. Read on. Verse 33. And they, and they, they that found him gather, gathering sticks brought him unto Moses and Aaron and unto all the congregation. Uh -huh. And they put him in ward because it was not declared what should be done to him. Uh-huh. And the Lord said unto Moses, The man shall be surely put to death. All the congregation shall stone him with stone without the camp. So if the eyes of the Lord are 10,000 times brighter than the sun, and the Lord is a just God, and the Lord is the one that made this call, what was he doing with the sticks? He was preparing to cook on the Sabbath. Because that's how they cooked back in the day. A lot of people don't, don't understand that. Like, you grew up in the country, you know, you dig a pit, you put your sticks there, you got your fire underneath, and you can roast whatever you want to roast. That's what this brother was about to do. And they knew that. That's why I was like, wait, dude, gather a stick. Hey, bring this dude to Moses. And they put him in war. It's like, oh, we don't, we don't know what to do. The Lord is like, put him to death. He knew what he was doing. Read. And all the congregation brought him without the camp. And stoned him with stones, and he died, as the Lord commanded Moses. And then after that was in, instituted the uh, fringes. But this man broke the Sabbath. And what was the punishment? He got put to death. Now, in this day and age, 
we went years breaking the Sabbath. Years. And not just the seven day Sabbath, but the feast days, the new moons. We broke all of that. Ignorantly, of course, but we still broke it. There was a punishment for doing sins unknowingly. You still had to sacrifice back in. You still had to come give your offering. There was still an offering made for the people of ignorant sins. Sins that you've done that you may not know was a sin. But guess what? There was still a penalty for it. So guess what? When this brother was gathering sticks on the Sabbath, he got put to death. Do we get put to death today? No. But that grace that teaches you, how does grace teach you? Hmm. Go to uh, Isaiah 30. It said, the grace of God that brings salvation appear to all men teaching us. How does grace teach you? Because as far as I know, grace is a time period. Grace and mercy is the same thing. So how can mercy or grace teach you? Let's see. Uh, verse 20. The book of Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 20. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, Yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore. Yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore. Read. But thine eyes shall see thy teachers. Your eyes are going to see your teachers. You're going to start to see brothers on the street saying, hey, Saturday is the Sabbath. From Friday sundown to Saturday sundown is the Sabbath. No buying, no selling, no cooking. You never heard that before. You was breaking the Sabbath all this time before you heard that. Now, after you heard it, guess what? Now you got to keep the Sabbath. Which starts to make you strive for that perfection. Sisters can't wear pants. You never heard that before this truth, but there was brothers on the street that brought out Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Brothers got to grow their beard out. You didn't know that until brothers on the street brought out Leviticus 19 and 27. No more tattoos. You didn't know that until brothers brought out Leviticus chapter 19, verse 28. Christmas is a pagan holiday. You did not know that until brothers brought out Jeremiah 10. But all of these things you could have got put to death for in the, in, in the past. So the grace or the mercy is showing you, hmm, these are the things that you have to do now. Now you're being taught what to do and what not to do. That is a part of the grace that was given to us to get ourselves right, to get ourselves correct. Because back in the day, like we just read in Numbers, this brother got put to death for breaking the Sabbath. Now go to Acts chapter 13, verse 38. That brother got put to death for breaking the Sabbath. If you were a sodomite, you got put to death. If you committed adultery, you got put to death. Read. Book of Acts 13, verse 38. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. Through Christ is preached the forgiveness of sins. Read. And by him all that believe are justified from all things. Justified means you're forgiven for all things from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. Because under the law of Moses, and you broke the Sabbath, there was no justification for you. Under Moses, if you was a sodomite, there was no justification for you. Death. But under Christ, now you have the opportunity to repent. Under Christ, now you have the opportunity to be forgiven and change, like it says in 2 Timothy 3.16. All scripture is given as reproof, correction, and instruction in righteousness. You can't get the kingdom just by saying, oh, I believe, I believe, I believe. Because that's what Christianity teaches. You don't have to do nothing. Oh, it's not about works. It's not about works. 
If it's not about works, then what is it about? Because what they're doing is they're confusing the masses of our people into thinking that works means the commandments. When works, the deeds of the law was the sacrifice. Go to uh, James 2. Faith without works. 217. James 2.17. Book of James chapter 2, verse 17. Even so faith, if it hath even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. Faith without works is dead being alone. Because I oh I believe in God, I believe in Christ. But you don't do nothing without proof of your faith, you don't have any faith. Just like brothers, it, uh, 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 in certain jobs, they say, well, look, if you didn't write it down, it didn't happen. If it's not on record, it didn't happen. So your faith, if it did not have proof or works, it didn't happen. You didn't have faith. Like you go to work, but you don't clock in. Yeah, you go to work. Oh, I, clock, I, I, I went to work for 10, 12 hours. Did you clock in? No, and it didn't happen. <laughs> go to your job talking about I, I i i believe that you know the position that you've given me i believe that i've done it but you slept at home all day but i believe that i did it you're not getting paid just like with the bible you can believe in your head all you want but if you don't do anything there's no proof there's no evidence. Go to uh, Proverbs 3 and 5. This is what Christianity is. Uh, it's, it's diabolical. Christianity is diabolical. It is a very big detriment to our people. It is a very big detriment to our people. Because this is what Christianity does. Read that. The book of Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not unto thine own understanding. That's what Christianity does. They lean to their own understanding and everything. I watched the, this. I watched this dude talk for an hour. The sermon was for one hour. Twenty minutes into the sermon is when he pulled his first scripture. Twenty minutes. The second scripture came at about minute 35 and the last scripture came at about minute 45 all of the rest of that time was his own words his own vain opinion his own interpretation no precept no nothing no going into the book to explain anything no christian pastor has ever gone in the bible and showed you what grace is they always show you what grace does Oh, you saved by grace. You saved by. But what is grace? Is grace a license to sin? Oh, it's your faith, brother. It's your faith. Okay. Go to Romans 331. Romans 331. The book of Romans, chapter 3, and verse 31. Uh huh. Do we. Then make void the law through faith? Do we make void the law through faith? Three. God forbid. Yea, we establish the law. No, we keep the law. Why? This is what it is. If if the Christian pastors are telling us that we don't have to keep the commandments of God. And Christianity as a whole believes that you don't have to keep the commandments of God. Why do they get upset when our people don't get justice in this system? I mean, if thou shalt not kill and thou shalt not commit adultery and women wearing pants, why are they upset at the, the, the fatherless children rate? Why are they upset at single parent homes? Why are they mad when bad things happen to us as a people? 
if we're not under no law anyway, why are we even upset when bad things happen? If we're a lawless people, why are we upset when nothing goes our way? Because Christianity is full of crap. That's what it is. Go up to verse 3 in Romans. Romans chapter 3 and verse 3. For what if some did not believe? So what if some don't believe that we got to keep the commandments in the faith of Christ? What if some don't believe that? Read. Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Shall the, their unbelief, the fact that they don't believe what's coming out of this Bible, shall that make this Bible of none effect? Read. God forbid. No, it will not. Read. Yeah, let God be true. Let God be true. But every man a liar. And every man is a liar. I'm a liar. He's a liar. Everybody online, we're all liars. Unless what? Read. As it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy saying. We're only justified in our sayings if we talk the words of God. Nowhere in the Bible do you read. Grace is God's unmerited, undeserved favor. Nowhere. Nowhere do you read that in the Bible. But what you will read is Titus 2 and 11 and 12. Saying that grace brings salvation and it teaches us to live soberly, godly and righteously. And it teaches us to deny ungodliness. Nowhere in Christianity does it teach you to deny ungodliness. The dude in that same video said, I would rather you go out and while out in sin and then hit rock bottom only to find out that all you have in this life is Jesus. He literally said that at about minute 45 to like minute 50. He said that. He said, I would rather you Hear this message and go wild out in sin and then hit rock bottom and then find out that all you have in this life is Jesus. Go to Romans 6.23. The book of Romans chapter 6 verse 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The wages of sin is death. 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 So, how could somebody hear that message and go wild out and sin and hit rock bottom? Who says they're even going to hit rock bottom? The Lord may put them to death soon as they start sinning. You want to know why? Go to Ephesians 4 and 7. Ephesians 4 and 7. Telling you, Christianity, bro, two, well, why, why do you think two-thirds of our people is going to die? Because they're going to believe crap like that. But let's see something about this whole grace thing. Read that. But in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7. Uh-huh. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Everybody's grace measure is not the same. They may have a brother that goes out and commits adultery three, four, five times, gets forgiven, and he stops committing adultery and gets his life together. And on the other hand, they got another brother. He goes out and commits adultery, and he gets put to death that first time. There's a different measure of grace to everybody. Everybody don't have the same measure of grace. So to, to, to tell people I would rather you hear this message and go wild out and sin and then come back later. You're teaching people wickedness, bro. You're teaching people that it's okay to sin. And this is what the Christian church is teaching. You can go look this up. This is pre-recorded classes that you can go look up and listen and see, damn, these dudes is telling people it's okay to sin. That's what they're telling people. But they don't tell people that there's a different measure of grace. And what's crazy about Christianity is, go to Romans 3.23. I'm going to show you something. <laughs> this, is, this, this, this is the thing about Christianity, bro. The book of Romans chapter 3, verse 23. For all have sinned 
and come short of the glory of God. They love to quote that scripture. They love to quote that scripture. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Okay. Uh, well, what is sin? Oh, sin is uh, when you miss the mark. Sin is uh, when you do something bad. Sin is when you go against God. Okay, you got a scripture? I don't need a scripture. I know what sin is. Well, tell me. Well, if you don't know, I can't teach you. <laughs> what? Read that. First John chapter 3, verse 4. Whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law. Whoever commits sin transgresses also the law. So, if you sin, you break the law. Read. For sin is the transgression of the law. Sin is the transgression or the breaking of God's law. So if there's no law, then there must not be any sin. And if there's no sin, then what are we going to be judged on? Hmm. That doesn't make sense. If we're going to, if judgment day means you're going to pay for the sins that you've done, and we all fall short and we all sin, then that must mean that the law is still in effect. If we all sin, then there's a law to sin against. But Christianity, they're so gone, they can't even see that. Go to uh, Proverbs 24 and 16. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But they can't tell you what sin is. Now that we know that sin is the transgression of God's laws, guess what? If all have sinned, should we continue sinning? Should we keep sinning? If you fall short, should you stay short? Read. The book of Proverbs, chapter 24, verse 16. For a just man falleth seven times and rises up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. A just man fall seven times and rise up again. Brothers and sisters will make mistakes. They will make mistakes, but they can correct themselves. As long as there's breath in their body, they can correct themselves. Like it says in Acts 13, we're justified from all things from by the which we could not be justified by the law of Moses. Under the law of Moses, half of the sisters and brothers out here, we would have been dead. Then, now for the sisters would have been dead because they would have played the whore, had sex out of marriage, and got stoned to death. The brothers, they would have got put to death for committing adultery. You know what I'm saying? They would have got put to death for being a sodomite. They would have got put to death for, for uh, you know, the spirit of jealousy. You know what I'm saying? Brothers would have had sex with somebody else, wife or something like that. You know the scriptures say, ain't, no, ain't nothing going to pacify that jealousy. You can give many gifts. You can give a whole ransom. Still, nope. I need, I need, I need your blood. You know what I'm saying? Brother, what would Jesus do? What? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Ain't none of that. If, if with, without this grace, this time period to get ourselves correctly, guess what? We would be dead. We would be gone. That's why there's a different measure of grace given to everybody. And why some people, when they reject this truth, they die immediately. Other people, they hear and reject this truth, and they may come in a year or so later. We don't know the measure of grace that's been given to us. So it behooves us to keep the commandments now. Because guess what? We've tried everything else. Look at our neighborhoods as a whole. Five, six, seven Christian churches on the same block. And that block got drug dealers. That block got whorish women. That block got brothers killing one another. That block got drunks sitting out outside. Brothers not going to work, smoking weed all day, living off their woman. And the woman is in the church. Raising her hand, screaming at the top of her lungs doing that same Christian dance shuffle that they do all over the world. And a man at home watching football. Where's the change in our people? Where's the upliftment in our people? How come 
Our people are the ones at the bottom. But yet the Christian church never addresses any of that. And you know what's crazy? When it comes to Romans 3.23, all have fallen short and come short of the glory of God. That's, that's accurate. That, that, that is the perfect understanding. That's the cultural context. That's everything. Everything about that is right. John 3.16, oh, everything about that is right. Grace of God appeared to all men. Oh, all, all, all of that's right. But as soon as we start talking about keeping the commandments, oh, no, no, now, now. Now, see, you got to keep it in context, brother. See, you, 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 you got to go into the Greek, into the Hebrew, brother, because in the Greek and the Hebrew language, it says this and this. And those words mean that and that. You went to cemetery school for two years. <laughs> and now you're an expert on all languages? You can barely speak English. Exactly. They say the law is done away with, but yet you accept the tithes. If the law is done away with, and we all saved already, why we even got to go back to the church Sunday? Why we got to go back to that building? Why do you need a Rolls Royce? Why do you need a $65 million jet? I don't get it. If we're already saved, there is no law, and I can just do whatever I want and just say that I believe in Christ, why do we have to come here every single Sunday? Because that's a scam. It's a scam. Go to uh, 1 John 2 and 3. Because what they'll say is, they'll say, well, you got to have a close personal relationship with God. And that's going to show you your grace. So, grace, that unmerited, undeserved favor, which is not in the Bible, is going to get you that personal relationship with God. Okay. Because a lot of people, even when we bring out correction on the street, they say, well... I hear all of that, but you know, it's, it's more about your, your personal relationship with God, what, what your relationship with the Lord is. Okay. Our relationship with the Lord as a people is we sinned against him. And they go to that scripture that says we all have sinned. So we all sin. So we all sin together. So we come back to him separately. That don't even make sense. Read that. The book of First John, chapter 2 and verse 3. Let's get that close personal relationship. Read. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. We do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. Read. He that saith, I know him, and he does not his commandments is a liar. If you say you know him, oh, I got a close personal relationship with God, and you don't keep the commandments, you are what? Is a liar. Is a what? Is a liar. Is a liar. You're a liar. They got people on the street. Oh, I love y'all, brother. After you give them correction and they rebuke the, and, and they and they don't uh, want to hear the word of the Lord. Oh, I still love you, brother. You love me? What's my daughter's name? How many kids do I have? Where do I live at? Because all of the people who actually like love me, they know these answers. They throw around that love word like, oh, no, 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 no. Us giving correction, that's love. Us giving correction, that's love. Us going out on the street, getting guns pulled on us and knives pulled on us and cursed out by everybody that passed us by just to tell people to change for the better, that's love. That's what we do. We tell people to change their lives for the better and we get hated. Go to uh, Romans 6 and 1. Book of Romans chapter 6 and verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? So shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Shall we continue breaking the laws of God because we have grace? Read. God forbid. God forbid. Meaning no. Read. How shall we that are dead and dead to sin any longer, any longer therein? So how should we read it again? God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? 
So if we're dead to sin, meaning we don't do it no more. If you're dead to sin, meaning you killed off that more than members, like it says in Colossians chapter 3, verse 5. You've deadened those members. If you're dead to that sin, meaning you don't do it no more, how can you live therein any, any longer? If you were an adulterer and you stopped committing adultery, how can you commit adultery again if you've understood that grace teaches you to live righteously, which is keeping the commandments, which is thou shalt not commit adultery? We live as a lawless people and then we get upset when things turn to our detriment. You're living without rules. If you're saying there's no law, you're saying you can live with no rules. And if you can live with no rules, then why are you upset when people break other rules? Because it's not about the rules. It's about you changing what you want to do. That's what it is. You don't want to change you. So you figure, okay, it's more easy for myself if I just say, you don't have to keep no commandments. That's that leaning to your own understanding. That's what that is. Go to um, go to Luke 13, 22. Go to Luke 13, 22. The book of Luke, chapter 13, verse 22. Uh -huh. And he went through the cities and villages, teaching and journeying towards Jerusalem. So that same grace that teaches you is that same thing that Christ did. He went throughout Jerusalem teaching. Read. Then said one unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? And he said unto them, Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. So he said, Strive to enter in through the straight gate. S-T-R-A-I-T. -E meaning that gate that's not easy to get into. Read. When once the master of the house is risen up and has shut to, shut to the door, and ye begin to stand without and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. So when the master of the house is standing in front of the door, that's that, that's that time of grace. That's that, hey, get yourselves together and come on in. Get yourselves together, come on in. But then read it again. When once the master of the house is risen up and has shut to the door, and ye begin to stand without, and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. And he shall answer and say unto you, I know you not whence ye are. So when the door is shut, that means grace is over. When the door is shut, grace is over. There's a grace period. Grace is a time period. The time period is, okay, Christ came and died. Before he comes back, we need to get ourselves together. And in order to get yourselves together, you have to be taught to get yourselves together. And how are you taught to get yourselves together? By the men that are going out on the streets, that are holding classes, that are doing things, that are doing the work of the Lord. That are not just sitting on a biscuit talking about, oh, I believe I'm an Israelite and we got to keep the commandments. They're actually doing things. And you know what's crazy about the Christian church? They say, oh, it's not about works. It's not about works. But you're teaching. Yeah. That's a work. You don't have a job. Why? Because you live off of the church. Because that's your work. So if, if you don't have to do any works, why are you even up at the pulpit? If you don't have to do no works, grace, you don't have to do no works. It's all just believing. Why do you even have to be there at, 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 the, at the pulpit? How? It doesn't even make sense for you to be up there where you are if there's nothing else that can be done. There's no law to keep. There's no works to do. We're already saved. Why are you even up there? Uh, go to Proverbs 1 and 8. So if man can't keep all the laws, do you get mad when brothers cheat on you? If man can't keep all the laws, 
are you upset that our brothers and sisters be killed in the street by police? If man can't keep all the laws, are you willing to support the officers that get off with murdering our people in cold blood and they know what they do? If man can't keep all the laws, then what laws cannot man keep? Because that's what Christianity says. Oh, man can't keep all them laws. But you see a stoplight and you stop at that. You see a stop sign and you stop at that. You maintain your speed under the speed limit. There are 40,000 gun laws that people obey. But then look at the Bible, 613. That's so What? You obey your job. Your job got a book of rules and regulations, and you keep all of those. You keep that uniform. You keep your clock in and clock out time. You do your taxes, and there's laws to the taxes. You fill out your W-2, your W-9, your, your uh, 1098, whatever you got. You fill it out, and you make sure that you do it according as the law of this land states but when it comes to god's laws oh can't nobody do all that can't nobody do all that so do you get upset when the man that you was married to goes out and has sex with another woman or when he sits at home playing playstation all day oh the, a man don't work a man don't eat but there's no law. So what you quoting? What you what are you quoting? Oh, man can't keep all the laws. What laws cannot man keep? So you have to be a homosexual? You absolutely have to commit adultery. You can't lay your head down that night without murdering somebody. But then the same people they get mad when people gossip about them. That's a law. They get mad when they get treated unfairly. That's a law. Man can't keep all the laws, but love your neighbors, you love yourself. But how do you love your neighbors, you love yourself? If, if the hood teaches, there's no snitching. Only God can judge me. Yeah, next time you, under, next time you go to the police and you break the speed limit, or, or you, you, you get some sort of traffic violation or you get stopped for whatever reason. Say, look, there's no law. I'm under grace now. I'm under grace. No, grace is that time period from when they give you the ticket to when you got to pay it. They give you like a month and a half, sometimes two months to pay the ticket. That's a grace period. Mess around and not pay that ticket off. You have a warrant for your arrest. Grace done. Don't get about Christianity, bro. Read that, Proverbs 1 and 8. Look at Proverbs chapter 1, verse 8. My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy, thy mother. So don't, don't forsake the law of your mother. Because though man can't keep all the laws, but the one law that they can keep is that tithing. They can keep that to the fullest. To the fullest. And they ain't even keeping that right. Who said that dude was a Levite? Who got land is in giving them herbs? Who said that tithes was money? But they keep that, though. They keep that. Read it again. My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. So, forsake not the law of your mother. Read. Verse 9. For they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head. So if you keep the instruction, they are going to be an ornament of grace on your head. Read. And chains about thy neck. And chains of meaning they're going to bind, they're going to keep you straight. You got chains about your neck. You're not, you, you conflicted, you constricted. You're not going to the left or to the right. You're stuck. Read. My son, if, if sinners entice thee. If sinners entice thee. Consent thou not. Consent thou not. Why? Because grace is going to teach you. Those men are not living soberly. They are not living righteously. They are living in worldly lust and they're living ungodly. And grace is going to teach you to stay away from that. 
That's the crazy thing. And for those of them that don't know, the law was always in effect. What do you think Adam, what do you think the breadth of life was from Adam? Go to Proverbs 7 and 2. Book of Proverbs chapter 7 verse 2. Keep my commandments and live, and my law as the apple of thine eye. The Bible says keep my commandments and live. When Adam was created and he blew into his nostrils the breath of life and he became a living soul, he had the commandments. So when Cain killed Abel, that was a sin. The law was already in place. Without a law, there is no sin. So the next time your little cousin get killed, don't cry. Just say the murderer is under grace. When your people go to jail for selling drugs, we'll get upset. Just say the drug dealer and the fiend, they're under grace. This is what I don't get. Not even Esau believes grace the way Jake teaches it. Esau knows there's always a, a reaction to every action. If there's a cause, there's an effect. If you say that there's no law, people are going to act lawless. When people act lawless, all hell breaks loose. Just wait till Halloween. Just wait till Halloween. And let's see how lawless people actually get. Because if there's no law, when did the law stop? Because they say, well, Christ died, he paid it all. Well, I know after Christ died, there was the sub-Saharan slave trade. There was the transatlantic slave trade. We were put in human zoos. We were castrated. Our women were taken from us, raped, dissected. They had medical experiments put on us. Where, where, in what time period was the God loves everybody? Where was the all men? Where was the, 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 where was that? When we were in slaves and we were the ones that were getting a foot put up our behind. Where, where was all of that at? Where was all of that at? Where was the, the, the black people that was fighting for the right to vote when we were getting murdered and thrown to alligators as gator bait? Where was all of that at? Christianity is a, a, a joke. Go to Ephesians 2, verse 8. The book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verse 8. Mm -hmm. For by grace are you saved through faith. That's what Christianity goes to. By grace are you saved through faith. Read. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Oh, it's the gift of God. And we already read in Ephesians 4 that that grace is given as a measure. So there's a certain amount of grace that you get given. That's the gift from Christ. Grace is... For by grace are you saved through faith. Hmm. Let's see. We already know what grace is. Titus chapter 2 verse 11. Grace teaches us. Read it again. Let's read it again. For by grace are you saved through faith. Grace teaches us. So we live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Faith. When you don't make void the law through faith, and you don't make void the law through grace. Faith, uh, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. So it, we didn't create grace for ourselves. We didn't create faith for ourselves. Christ did that. Christ was the gift from God that gave us the grace. Right? Read. Not of works, at least any man should boast. That's where it is. Go to James 2, verse 14. So it says, by grace are you saved through faith. Hmm. Let's get a little. Let's get a little clarity on that. Get a little clarity on that. James chapter two and verse fourteen. Mm -hmm. What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith? Though a man say he hath faith, 
and have not worked. Uh huh. Can faith save him? Can faith alone save? If you have faith with no works, but 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 in Ephesians two and nine it says not of works. So so what is the works that it's talking about? It's talking about the sacrifice. It's not about sacrifice. Cause I got I got another one for you. Uh, go up to verse one in Ephesians chapter two. So it said, for by grace are you saved through faith. And you have to have works to go with your faith. You can't make void the law through faith or grace. And grace teaches you to keep the law. Hmm. So by grace are you saved through faith. So by keeping the commandments, are you saved through keeping the commandments in the faith of Christ? And that 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 period is you're not gonna get put to death now. Not now. But later you will. But now you have an opportunity to change. Read that. The book of Ephesians chapter two and verse one. Uh-huh. And you have to be quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin. When you were dead in trespasses and sins, go real quick. Proverbs twenty one sixteen. When you were dead in trespasses and sins, what does that mean? Let's see. Book of Proverbs, chapter 21, verse 16. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding. If you wander out of the way of understanding and understanding his commandments, read. Shall remain in the congregation of the dead. You remain in the congregation of the dead. When you wander away from the commandments, you will remain in the congregation of the dead. Go back to uh, Ephesians. The book of Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 1. And you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. You have he quickened, made alive again, who were dead in trespasses and sins. Meaning you were not keeping the commandments. Read. Wherein, in time past, you walked according to the course of this world. When you walked according to the course of this world. Christianity walks according to the course of this world. That's why they celebrate Christmas, which is not in the Bible. They celebrate Thanksgiving, which is the celebration of the slaughter of our brothers and sisters. They celebrate New Year's in the dead of winter when New Year's begins in March, April time, in the spring. They celebrate Easter and not the Passover. They celebrate Fourth of July, not Pentecost. They don't celebrate any of the high holy days of the Bible but they uphold all of the holidays of this present world. Read it again. We're in, in time past, you walk according to the course of this world. They walked according to the course of this world. According to the prince of the power of the air. That's Satan. Read. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Read. Among whom also we all have our conversation in times past and the lust of our flesh. They had the conversation in times past of the lust of their flesh. Oh, I got this man. I got that woman. I'll be doing this. I'll be doing that. I'm riding in this. I'm riding in that. All lustful covetous talk. Nothing about, oh, I'm keeping the commandments. Nothing about, hey, I'm trying to change. Hey, I'm trying to do better in the sight of God. I'm trying to do what God tells me to do because Christianity is not in the Bible. And the people who were called Christians were Israelites. Read. Fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And the people who were called Christians were anointed ones. And, and Christianity, they fulfill all of desire of this world. They do nothing that this Bible says to do. Nothing. Go ahead. And we're by nature the children of wrath, even as others. And by nature, we were, we were supposed to get put to death like everybody else. But Christ came and justified us from the sins that we couldn't be justified previously under the law of Moses. Under the law of Moses, you break the Sabbath, you get put to death. You're a homosexual, you get put to death. You commit adultery, you get put to death. But now we can be forgiven for those things and not do them anymore. Go to uh, Romans 3 and 20. So when you look at Ephesians 2 and 9 and it says not of works 
lest any man should boast. We're going to see what that means. Read. Book of Romans chapter 3 and verse 20. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, shall no flesh be justified in his sight. The deeds of the law. Read on. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Because if without knowing God's laws, you would not know what your sin is. And will you still die in your sin? Yes. That doesn't mean just because you don't know that you're going to get the kingdom. No. You're still going to get put to death. But the people who, who know, they're going to get put to death and they know why. <laughs> Read. Verse 21. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifest, manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophet. So the righteousness of God without the law. What law? The law of sacrifice. Because how could the righteousness, which is the law or the commandments, be made manifest without the law it doesn't make sense the law that it's talking about is the law of sacrifice read even the righteousness of god which is by faith of jesus christ unto all and upon all them that believe for there is no difference so it said even the righteousness of god which is by faith of jesus christ meaning the commandments of god which is kept by faith of jesus christ go to revelations 14 and 12 real quick They say, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, the laws of God, which are kept by the faith of Jesus Christ. Read the book of Revelation, chapter 14, verse 12. Here's the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God. Keep the commandments of God, the righteousness of God and the faith of Jesus by the faith of Christ. Go back to Ephesians. I mean, Romans. Look at Romans 22 again. Chapter three, verse 22. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe. Go to Titus chapter 3, verse 8. Let's see what the word believe means. Let's see what the word believe means. Because Christianity says, you just got to believe on Christ. Christ did all the works. But, but the Bible says, to faith without works is dead. So you have to do works. And... In order to be perfect, you got to be corrected by the Bible, That's right. which makes you thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Mm -hmm. Read. But the Titus chapter 3 verse 8, this is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed, they that which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So if you believe in God, you have to be careful to maintain good works. Read. These things are good and profitable unto men. Why? Because good works are good and profitable unto you. So if you believe, you have to be doing good works. If you say you believe and you're not doing nothing, you get nothing. Christ himself said, you shall know them by their fruits. Strive to enter through the straight gate. You can't strive without working to do so. You can't believe without doing good works. You can't. It won't happen. Go to uh, Galatians 2.17. Galatians 2.17. This is another cut to Christianity. Because Christianity is not in the Bible. Nothing that they teach is in the Bible. Come as you are, not in the Bible. Grace is the unmerited, undeserved act of kindness and favor, not in the Bible. Grace teaches us to keep the commandments. Read. Book of Galatians chapter 2 verse 17. But if... While we seek to be justified by Christ. If we seek to be justified by Christ, Christ did it. Christ paid it all. All I got to do is believe in Christ. Christ Christ did everything. I don't have to do nothing. He did it all. Read. We ourselves also are found sinners. We ourselves are also found what? Sinners. Sinners. You are found a transgressor. If all you're doing is saying Christ did it all. Read. Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? Is Christ the minister of breaking the commandments now? Read. God forbid. Read. 
For if I build again the things which I destroyed. If I go back to the same sins that I supposedly became a new creature on. Read. I make myself a transgressor. You back to sin. If you say, well, Christ did it all. Christ paid it all. Christ did it all. But you are having sex outside of marriage. You're not keeping the Sabbath day holy. You're doing everything that God says not to do. You are a transgressor. You are found a transgressor. That's what it is. That's what it is. And it, it, it's, it's, it's amazing that, hey, don't go back and forth with that sister. Don't go back and forth. She decided to get up at, right now it's, it's what, 8.17. She decided to get up at 8 o'clock in the morning and come on here to prove that she doesn't believe in the word. So what? Our job is done. If we've affected this sister enough to wake up early in the morning and log on to a class that she doesn't even believe in, hey, all praise to the Most High. All praise to the Most High. So, go to uh, 2 Corinthians 5 and 10. Because remember, Ephesians 4 and 7 said we were all given a different measure of grace. All given a different measure of grace. Go. The book of Second Corinthians, chapter 5, verse 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. If we got to appear before oh. the judgment seat of Christ, mm -hmm. what are we appearing before the judgment seat for? Read. That everyone may receive the things done in his body according to. According to that, he had done whether it be good or bad. So if uh -oh. you have done good or bad, you're standing in front of the judgment seat of Christ. In Christianity, you can do no wrong. Why? Because there's no law. So how can you be judged by bad things that you've done in front of the judgment seat of Christ if there's no law to judge you based on? How? How? To believe means to keep good works. To have faith means to have good works. To be under grace is to keep the commandments. All of these are the same thing. So how is it that we can get anything else from that without the Bible? The Bible tells us everything. Not our own vain opinion. Go to Acts 17 and 30. Go to Acts 17 and 30. The book of Acts, chapter 17, verse 30. And the times of these ignorant, God winked at it. So for the times of these ignorant things, God winked at it. You know what the winking is? Grace. Mercy. God said, you know what? I knew they was going to do this. And I'm, a, I'm, I'm not going to get mad right now. Read. What? Now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. He commandeth every man everywhere to do what? To repent. To repent. Repent. He winked at it, meaning he gave you grace, but he commanded you to repent. Read. Verse 31. Because he hath appointed a day. And the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, and that he hath raised him from the dead. So there's a judgment day that's set to happen. And if you don't repent of your transgressions, if you don't repent of your sins, guess what? There is a punishment to pay. There is death. For you, waiting. If you don't repent, give me that in Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 36. Ezekiel chapter 18 and verse 30. Uh -huh. Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways, said the Lord God. Repent 
and turn yourselves from all your transgressions. Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions. What are you repenting from? Your sins. The commandments of God that you broke. That's what you're repenting from. The commandments that you broke. Your transgressions are the commandments that you broke. Your iniquities are the transgressions and the commandments that you broke. The transgressions you've committed. You got to repent from that. Give me Luke 13 and 3. Old Testament, New Testament. Ezekiel said in the Old Testament that we got to repent and turn from our transgressions. Let's see what Christ said. The book of Luke chapter 13 and verse 3. I tell you nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Christ said repent or die. Right. Give me Ecclesiastes 8 and 11. And this is why our people will die in this captivity. This is why. Because they swear, Christianity swears up and down. Heaven is going to be packed and hell is going to be empty. And if you ask them who's going to hell, oh, bad people. Like what? What bad people? Because there was bad people that did bad things to us today. There are nations of people that do bad things to us today. So who's going to be in this lake of fire? Where's the lake of fire even going to be at? Does your Christian church tell you that? No, they don't. Read. Look at Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 11. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. So because sentence against an evil work, because you can commit sin today and not get punished for it now, they say it's all good. Read. Therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Our people is fully set in them to do evil. Evil. Because after Christ died, we went into a horrific slavery of biblical proportions. So where was grace? Where was grace when our men were getting castrated? Where was grace when we were getting thrown overboard at shark bait? When our babies were getting fed to alligators? Grace is the time period to get ourselves right. The things that are happening are happening because we refuse to keep the commandments. And he said all of these things would happen. He said you would be smitten before your enemies. He said you would die and waste away in the land of your captivity. He said all of these things would happen, and now all of these things are happening. He also said if you repent, you're going to get the kingdom. You keep the commandments, you're going to get the kingdom. Where's grace after George Floyd? Ahmaud Arbery. Eric Gardner. Sandra Bland. Where is the Christianity grace at? Where? Where at? Because the curses in Deuteronomy still came to pass. They still came to pass after Christ. Read that. Continue reading on uh, Ecclesiastes. Verse 12. Though a sinner do evil a hundred times. Though a sinner do evil a hundred times. And his days be prolonged. And his days be prolonged because they got a lot of people that say, well, I lived a long life. And yeah, I was doing this and I was doing that. But look, God still gave me a long life. A long life don't mean that you are good with God. Just because you woke up today doesn't mean you're good with God. They got a lot of people that woke up this evil as hell. What that dude, Charles Manson? Yeah, he's waking up. He's waking up every single day. He was wicked as hell. Jeffrey Dahm, he was eating people. He woke up every day. I think some of them dudes still alive. Then Manson, he's still alive. You know what I'm saying? Read. Yet yeah, surely I know that it shall be well with them that fear God with fear before him. But it's going to be well with them that fear God. And fearing God means this. Go to uh, Psalms 119, 120. Psalms 
Psalms 119, 120. This is why we got to stick to the words of God. We have to stick to the words of God. When people come to you with their own vain opinion, go to the words of God. You cannot argue with God's word. You can't. Opinions, doctrines, all of that stuff gets destroyed. Read. The book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 120. My flesh trembleth from fear of thee, and I am afraid of thy judgments. He's afraid of the judgments of God. We should be afraid of the judgments of God. We're talking about the same God that rained fire down on Egypt, that destroyed Egypt. He destroyed the entire world. He allowed the transatlantic slave trade to happen. The same God that took down Babylon and Persian and Medes, the same God that took down Rome, this is the same God that we've been under. Same one that says, I kill and I make alive. That's the same one that we under. Christ didn't come to change nothing. He can't change. The son can't change what the father has already said. Impossible. Impossible. When it comes down to it, grace is teaching us to keep. Let me let me end it with that. Go to Titus 2 and 11. We went through all them scriptures. To show this yet again, read the book of Titus chapter 2 verse 11. For the grace of God that brings salvation hath appeared to all men. The grace of God that brings salvation, salvation is for Israel, according to Luke chapter 1, verses 68 down to 71. Hath appeared to all men, will make sure a man is keeping the commandments, according to 1 Kings 2 and 2. According to Psalms 147, 19 and 20, Psalms 50 and 5, Deuteronomy 4 and 44, Israel was given the commandments. Read. Teaching us that denying ungodliness. Teaching us, and the only way to get taught is by the Israelites. The prophets are Israel, according to uh, Amos 2 and 11. Teaching us. And the Israelites are the ones that's out there teaching. Read. Denying ungodliness. The Israelites are teaching you to deny ungodliness. Read. And worldly lust. We should live soberly. We should live soberly. Read. Righteously. Righteously. And godly in this present world. And godly in this present world. We are supposed to live godly and righteously in this present world. This is what grace is teaching us. This is what grace is teaching us. So, you can either keep the commandments in the faith of Christ, or you can bet your life on not doing anything. See what that gets you in the end. Bet your soul on that. Bet your soul on bet your soul on not doing anything, not changing, not 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 focusing on the commandments, not none of that. Let's see where that gets you. And when the next George Floyd happens, when the next Breonna Taylor happens, don't say anything. Yep. So, with that, I pray you brothers and sisters got edified. We're going to end it now. Shalom. Most high Christ bless.